In section 3.4, we will talk about sum and difference identities. So as a quick refresher, we need to memorize the first quadrant of the unit circle. So for a 30 degree angle, the, let me actually write it a different way. For a 30 degree angle, the corresponding point on the unit circle is going to be radical 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. For a 45 degree angle, the corresponding point is going to be radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. And for a 60 degree angle, the corresponding point is going to be 1 half, comma, radical 3 over 2. Now, I think the easiest way to memorize it is to know that for 30 degrees, 30 and 3 start with the same number. So for 30 degrees, the x value is radical 3 over 2, which means the other one is 1 half. For 45, remember 45, 45, 90 is 1, 1, radical 2. So that will be radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. And then for 60 degrees, the, uh, the radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, they flip. So it will be 1 half and radical 3 over 2. Okay, this is also written here. Now for any multiple of 30 or 45 degrees, we can find a reference angle and find the exact values since the value of a reference triangle uh, is going to be the same as the, the trig value of the actual angle. Okay, so any multiple of 30, so we got 30, 60, 90, um, etc, etc. We got 180, 270, 360, then we got 120, 150, 210, uh, 240, 300, 330, also multiples of 45, so you got 45, you got 90. So all of these angles are angles whose exact value we know. Okay, so we're going to be using these and sum and difference identities in order to find the exact values of angles we don't know. So here are the sum and difference identities. Take a look at these. So you have sine of a plus b equals to sine of a times cosine of b plus cos a sine b, and so on and so forth. So please take a look at these. You can pause the video if you'd like. Now these you do not have to memorize. These will be provided to you on the exam in a formula sheet. Okay, so um, it says use an addition or subtraction formula to write the expression as a trigonometric function of one number. So basically, we're trying to we're going to look at this formula, and we're going to figure out as a single number what is that the tangent of. So let's take a look. We have tangent of a minus tangent of b divided by one plus tangent of a times tangent of b. So let's go back and figure out which of the formulas this fits. Okay, so we have tangent of a minus tangent of b it looks like it's this one. So let's let's take a look. We got tangent of a minus tangent of b divided by 1 plus tan a tan b. So we got 1 plus tan a tan b. Perfect. So this means that small a is equal to 73 degrees and small b is equal to 13 degrees. Now let's go back one more time. What is that the formula for? It's tan a minus b. So then this formula is going to equal to tan a minus b. That's the formula it fits. So if a is 73 and b is 13, then we have 73 minus 13 degrees, which will be tangent of 60 degrees. Okay, so a is going to be 60 degrees. Now we got to figure out what is the tangent of 60 degrees. We've got to actually evaluate that. So to find the tangent of 60 degrees, let's go back to our unit circle. Okay, so for a unit circle, for 60 degrees, the corresponding pair is 1 half comma radical 3 over 2. So let me uh, put that here. So in my unit circle, if I have 60 degrees, my corresponding point is 1 half comma radical 3 over 2. Remember that 30 goes with radical 3, so, um, so radical 3 over 2 will not go first for 60 degrees. The one half is going to go first. Now tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I want to find the tangent of 60 degrees, 
it's going to be the opposite. So the, the numerator of the y value, which is radical 3, divided by the numerator of the x value, which is 1. So this is going to be radical 3 over 1, which is simply radical 3. So the value of b is going to be, and notice we already have the radical, so we just want to put the value of b, which is going to be 3. And we don't put radical 3 because we already have a radical. So we're just going to put the value of b, which in this case is going to be 3. And again, we get that by, remember, tangents opposite over adjacent. So for the opposite, you just take the numerator of the y value and then the numerator of the x value. Next one, it says use the sum or difference identity to find the exact value of sine of 165. So here's why we can't find the exact value of sine of 165. If I just graph this on the side, so 165, I start here at the x-axis. Any angle in standard position starts at the x-axis. This is 90. And then I got to figure out 90 plus what is 165. So if I take 165 minus 90, this will give me 75 degrees. Now the problem is we don't have a reference angle for 75 degrees that's going to give us an exact value because remember we can have 30, 45, or 60, but for 75 we have no idea. So that poses a problem because we still want to find the exact value. We don't want to calculate our approximation. So to find the exact value of the sine of 165 degrees, we got to write 165 as the sum or difference of one of these angles whose exact value we actually know. Okay, so there are different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm going to the easiest way, I think, is to take the... 165 and write that as to 120 and 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite sine of 165 degrees as sine of uh, 120 plus 45. Now why does that help us? Because we know the exact value of sine of 120 and we know the exact value of sine of 45 because they both have reference angles that are either 30, 60, or 45. So now let's go back to the formula for sine of a plus b. So I took the 165 and I wrote this as 120 plus 45 because I know the exact values of both. So the formula says this equals to sine of a cos b plus cos a sine b. So in this case the value of a will be 120 and the value of b will be 45. So according to the formula, this will equal to sine of A, which is sine of 120, times cosine of B, which is cosine of 45, plus cos A, which is going to be cosine of 120, times sine B, which is sine of 145 degrees. Now if I write this with a little more space, let me write this in one line, the way that it is in the formula, then we're going to have... So once again, it's a plus b, so follow this formula. So you have sine of a, which is sine of 120, times cosine of b, which is cosine of 45, plus cosine of a, which is cosine of 120, times sine of b, which is sine of 45. So now our objective is to figure out what is the sine of 120, what is a cosine of 45, what is a cosine of 120, what is a sine of 45. So to do this, Let's go ahead and sketch both of these angles. Let's sketch uh, 120 and let's sketch 45. So I'm going to make two different sketches. So my first sketch is going to be 120 degrees. And so if I sketch 120, I'm going to start this off in standard position, which is here. And I have 90 plus 30 is 120. But my reference angle is always made with the x-axis and the terminal side. So my reference angle, or my reference triangle here, is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, now there are a couple of ways of doing this. One way is you can say that opposite of 60 is going to be radical 3. Then this is 30, so opposite of 30 is going to be 1, but it's negative. And then the hypotenuse is going to be 2. From there, you can say, what is my sine? What is my cosine? Um, 
etc., etc. Or you can say that this point, so this point associated with 60 degrees is going to be this one, 1 half radical 3 over 2. So I can say that this point here is going to be 1 half comma radical 3 over 2. But because we're going in the negative direction, this is going to be a negative 1 half. You can do it either way, whatever way makes more sense to you. I'm going to actually do it the reference triangle way. Okay, so according to the reference triangle, if I want the sine of 120, this is 120 degrees, it'll have the exact same sine, cosine, tangent as this reference angle, reference triangle. So sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine is going to be radical 3 over 2. If you do it using the point, the sine is always going to be the y value on the unit circle, and the cosine is going to be the x value. The cosine is going to be negative 1 half. It's the adjacent over hypotenuse plus cosine of 120. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not correct because now I need to know cosine of 45. Cos 45 is not the same thing as cosine of 120, right? So now I need a, a 45 degree angle. So for a 45 degree angle, you can use the triangle or you, you can just use the, the point on the unit circle. It's up to you. Uh, but the special right triangle is going to be 1, 1, radical 2. So I know that cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over radical 2. But I got to rationalize that. So this will be radical 2 over 2. Make sure you, got, make sure you rationalize everything. So then this will be uh, radical 2 over 2. Now we're going to go back to the 120 degree angle. So I'm going to label these. This angle is 120. This angle is 45. For the 120 degree angle, I need cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be negative 1 half. And if I look at the ordered pair, the, co the cosine is going to be the x value. And then we got sine of 45. So sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. That's once again radical 2 over 2. If I multiply this, radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 1 times radical 2 is negative radical 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So if I put this under one denominator, we're going to have radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4. Now, in my open math, they want the answer in a different format. So here's how they want the answer in my open math. So this is the answer, but in my open math, here's what they want you to do. So the answer that you're going to submit in my open math is going to look something like this. Uh, radical 6 and radical 2, they, they, they both have a common factor of radical 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that out. We're going to factor out a radical 2. Now remember I told you guys in the previous section that factoring is the same thing as dividing. So if I take radical 6 and I divide that by to figure out what's left over in the parentheses, I'm going to divide these each by radical 2. So if I take radical 6 and I divide it by radical 2, then what I'm going to have left over is a radical 3. If I have radical 2 and I divide it by radical 2, what I have left over is a 1. And then on the denominator, I still have a 4. So in my open math, this is the format they want your answer to be in. And once again, to get there, let me rewrite this a little bit. To get there, I want to take a look at what we did. We had radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4, and they both have a common factor of radical 2. So what we did was, to figure out what's left over in the parentheses, we divided each of these by radical 2. And that gave us a radical 3. 6 over 2 is 3. Radical 2 over radical 2 is 1. And whatever we factor out, that has to go on the outside.